we are a growing region. And there's lots of potential that has not been tapped. If these corridors are not working, they cannot get their product to market, and that is critical for every producer. The timing for implementing these recommendations was ready yesterday and the day before. The main purpose of the Central Corridor is to monitor, coordinate the movements of transit traffic from the airport up to Lake Victoria, Lake Tanganyika, to Kigali, and up to DRC, and even passing on the other countries of Rwanda and Burundi. The Northern Corridor runs all the way from Mombasa and connects into Rwanda, Burundi, Uganda, Eastern DRC, Southern Sudan. It's basically linking 200 million people into the markets, the global markets, through Mombasa as the outlet. We all actually rely more or less 100% on the corridor itself. Uh, without it, I think our economies will collapse. And that's one of the reasons why we want to support the government in the region to invest massively in the development of that infrastructure, particularly the road and rail networks, and improvement of the main port. This corridor diagnostic study, to us, it is very, very useful. It's about the efficiency of the both Northern Corridor and Central Corridor, the, the strategies to streamline the management and the operations of these corridors so that they can promote efficiency in the, in, in the transport and the cargo logistics. For the first time, I think we're doing a, a very detailed diagnostic study, uh, bringing together all the analysis, not just reinventing the wheel, but bringing together lots of other work by other studies, you know, other, other uh, development partners who've been involved in this area. And we're trying to really take it forward to the next level. And one of its strengths is that it is supported by the governments and the sub-regions, uh, particularly of the tripartite. One of the challenges in this region is that everybody wants to do something in transit, but we don't often talk to each other. So without that coordination, without that coordinated effort, we're often duplicating, we're often not having the impact that we could have. If transit costs could be reduced, the World Bank estimates that for every 10% reduction in transit costs, trade will increase by 25%. If you go to Kigali and you buy any consumer good, 45% of the value of that good is just transport. How can those, co those countries compete? They really need to see faster, more efficient and cheaper forms of transit. The logistics and transportation uh, activities, you know, it is a chain. And uh, if one player doesn't do it right, then it affects the rest of the chain. DFID and USA decided to invest in the CDS because we wanted not only a detailed analysis of the different barriers to transit along the northern and central corridors, but we really wanted to, to ask the question, you know, what would be the impact of our interventions and how could we use the limited money that we have to kind of generate the, the largest possible decreases in time and cost of moving goods in the region. The action plan that we have proposed and that is, has been endorsed largely by the, by the stakeholders in the various workshops we have had will constitute a guide for concrete action to, to remove the inefficiencies along the corridor. The forecast growth in, uh, trans in traffic you know, along, along the corridors could double by 2015, even quadruple by 2030. Now, can you imagine if no action has been taken by then? You know, it's a sort of serious accident waiting to happen. What we are trying to prioritize now should have been a priority five, six years ago. So we have a lot of backlog. We have a lot of cries from the transporting public. And we need to implement all these projects within a time frame of five years that we have given ourselves. What we wanted to do was to try to bring together a very diverse set of stakeholders that often don't get together on a regional basis, really to look at the problems of the economic corridor as one economic unit rather than a parcel 
of national units to think about how we could improve the, the efficiency of transit all the way through the corridor. And that was really the genesis of this, um, really to try to drive cost reductions along the corridors and improvements in trade as a result. This is an opportunity for governments to see what intervention can be done. It's an opportunity for the private sector. What intervention can be done in order to improve the transportation of goods within the region? Government and the, and the agencies have to understand that they need money from private sector. And this is clear because uh, uh, the bill of $4.1 billion cannot be met by just public sector. It is important that uh, we have the enablers for the private sector to have confidence to bring in the substantial amounts of money required uh, to take part in the development of infrastructure in the region. One thing for a fact is that PPP is very important uh, for any country to grow, especially our developing economies. What we intend to do when, as much as possible when it comes to private sector participation is to get them involved more in operation. The combined population of the East African countries is, is, is the almost 150 million population. So there is a lot of potential in terms of consumption and in terms of market. So when the private sector puts its money in the, in the region, they, they can be assured of the returns. The CDS has actually come up with a prioritized list of 27 projects that, that compose of a range of different actions that they believe will reduce the time and cost of transit along the central and northern corridors by 28 percent. We have actually suggested programs of decongesting it by actually privatizing some elements of uh, port operations. These are already at a discussion at the cabinet level. We are waiting to see the outcomes of that. I think it's important to facilitate business people to have uh, inland depots so that they can uh, decongest the port and also this will also promote efficiency in handling of the, uh, of the goods within the port. Well I think one of the things that, that we're doing around the CDS, we've consulted with literally hundreds of people and lots of different industry groups. We brought together representatives from freight forwarders, shippers, the private sector in each country and across the region. Their inputs have driven the kind of priority sets that are in the CDS. Their involvement has been there from the beginning. It'll be there till the end. The cooperation between partners to produce the CDS was in itself a real victory. Um, I, we can't thank our partners enough. It wasn't just DFID and USAID, it was also JICA, um, the African Development Bank. You know, we had a number of partners. Most times the reports are written in, on paper and they are read, uh, distributed and they are put in, on shelves. That might happen to this way if we had not come with a communication strategy, which comprises uh, short films, reaching out to the media, electronic and print media, website uh, information and sensitization that will go beyond the finalization and of the report. We recognize its importance and we are putting adequate investment into it uh, and continuous improvement of the corridor to ensure that not just the Kenyan traders but our East African uh, uh, traders have access to markets and the rest of the world has access to that market through our corridor. So the five governments in a way are creating an environment where the private sector, the investors will have a common platform in which a common market is available for them. The CDS is trying to show that this is a viable, as far as time is concerned, as far as the cost of transportation of goods along the route is concerned. I'm very confident that implementation of the CDS action plan will have a major impact on the citizens of this Africa. Uh, we are now in a new paradigm and our role this time is to move even more faster in there, to give more freedom and do more of monitoring rather than running the institutions. Let people run the institutions, let us do the guiding. It is an, an important study and uh, I commend the donors who have actually put their money and the government for embracing it. If you can get the transport costs down, if you can get competitiveness up, then one hopes that you're going to boost your trade, boost your growth, 
uh, and we know from empirical research that a very large part of poverty reduction is through economic growth. And I want to see, want to see the quality of life of, uh, of the Kenyan people and the East African people improve as a result of the intervention we are making within the improvements in the transport corridors. My dream for the region is that every child, every teenager wakes up and says to themselves, if I work hard today, I can produce something, I can make something, I can pull myself, I can pull my family out of poverty. In the final analysis, it is about prosperity and everybody uh, is there to gain from it. The day I will hear that we have reduced the port dwell time from nine days to two days. The day I will hear that our borders are no longer taking five days to clear a truck, that a truck can pass through these borders and have only one inspection point. The day I will hear that the axle load control is no longer an issue, trucks are not destroying our roads. That will be my happiest day because I know that at that point the costs of doing business, um, relative transportation costs will have come down.